back. WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore positive. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody out there celebrating, uh, going uh, over the river and through the woods to grandmom's house. Make sure you're adding a little uh, wise ice cream a la mode to uh, all your pie here to celebrate this weekend. I, um, I had a flight down to Jacksonville. I had an occasion. My uh, elementary school kindergarten teacher uh, lives in uh, uh, just north in Yuli. Uh, I was uh, going to go down to visit her, but, you know, I don't have a credential this weekend. I've already been in the pool. I've seen them lose big games at the Gator Bowl and win big games at Everbank and lose other games when they didn't run Ray Rice. And I've even been to Wembley uh, where they took knees and, um, and and still were losing 31 to nothing at halftime. Sam Kavaris has seen it all. He <laughs> is um, – He's one of us. He is a Baltimorean who escaped to the palm trees of sunny North Florida. Some call it South Georgia. Uh, we welcome him back onto the program as one of our defending champions. I will not get together with you. I know you were going to invite me over to your place in Jack's Beach, and we were going to have a cookout and do all those things. But uh, uh, much like you uh, and I, we're, we're now independent, kind of like that scene in Animal House out on the porch. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been thrown out after 26 years. Um, you did how many years of TV did you do in Jacksonville? 35, 40, 40. 40. just yeah. 40. That's all. All just right. 40. You brought the team. One there. day they came to my out. desk and said, "Yeah, you don't work here anymore." So, but I mean, that's uh, you know, I knew it was a bad business when I got into it, and um, it proved itself 40 years later to be just. <laughs> it was okay for 40 years. Every two weeks, you get paid. Right? As you know. The only worst business is radio, and that and that's very true, right? I mean, being fired in radio is like a red badge of courage, so everybody feels like, oh, I need to fire somebody to uh, legitimize my stay here. So, but, well, but I actually had fired people, none of them like without any. I mean, I own the place; I wanted it to be good, I wanted it to be great all sure. the time, and and really, most of the times I fired people was about the economy because I always had a dream of making it bigger. But still do, right? Making it bigger, 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 and bigger. I. I never thought in a million years that I'd still own a radio station, be on the air 168 hours a week, and that somehow the team would think just throwing me out would be kind of quiet because it has it has not been quiet, whether it's legal or not or ethical or the right thing to do. It certainly is a little different where your community begged to get a team, our community together begged to get it to you've been a part of baltimore where the colts left right. and then begged to get yep. back and jacksonville Absolutely. and all that it really is amazing how uncommunity minded these organizations are even in jacksonville where they play they sew a game off to the gypsies every year and just go over to london and play to make money well and you know i don't mind the one london game but you know they tried to play two home games in london and i railed against that and i got a call from the president of the club to tell me i didn't know what i was talking about and anytime somebody tells you that, it means you know exactly what you're talking about, but they're trying to deflect, deflect you off to something else. And, you know, if the Jaguars want to, and this is what they should do, the Jaguars should go to London and play their home game because they have a fan base there. And I don't have a problem with that. It's, it's a fun trip for a lot of Jacksonville people. Uh, all, all the players and the organization have gotten used to it at this point. It does make shot a lot of money. In fact, 23% of their yearly revenue comes from that one game. That's pretty pretty significant for a, a market the size of Jacksonville. So now they should stay there an extra week and play as the visitor, maybe in Munich, you know, maybe somewhere else. But don't try to take a second home game from here and act like it's a good thing because it's not. And, you know, I have accused the Jaguars, and, and, and it sounds like the Ravens a little bit are like this these days. They act like they're an alien organization who happens to operate out of downtown, you know, that uh, and they're like, well, we donate so much money. a worldwide brand. Yeah, exactly. We donate so much money. We do this. We do that. Yeah, well, that's different than than showing up at Rotary Clubs or, you know, being at dinner and signing an autograph or buying a house here in town even or any of that stuff. Was yeah. there an expectation of all that? In the beginning? I mean, I went down there in the beginning. They won right away. Brunel, yep. Smith, um, Baselli, yep. all that stuff. I right. was down there for those games with Eric Zier tripping over Ogden at the goal line uh, back in the day. And the Jag rags were out. But it was never like rabid. And it was always something to me that needed to be sold, which is different than what you left here in Baltimore, where we pined away, pined away, pined away. All of a sudden, I'm doing shows at the barn, and people think it's 1958, and Artie Donovan's in the back, and they're there's right. Rick Volk over there and Bruce Laird would stop by or Tom. We, we had a thing here, right? 
Jacksonville, yeah. what they had was, oh, we played a cocktail party, and some of us like Georgia, most of us like Florida, but that's what we do on Saturday. On Sunday, we fish or golf. <laughs> well, fish or golf, and 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 the weather and the environment here is a big competitor for the Jaguars, as is the inexpensive, large, flat-screen TV for every NFL team. But you, you've got to really look at Jacksonville as a – it's a transplant town, and they have – 45,000 hardcore Jaguar fans. They're there at every game. And, you know, you can look at Tampa Bay as an example over the years. They were terrible forever, you know, under Hugh Culverhouse. They never were very competitive, maybe every now and then. You know, in 1979, they went to the NFC Championship game um, with Doug Williams as their quarterback. You know, and but they had 40,000 people at the uh, Sombrero there every week. It didn't matter. And in any situation – save for a few. I mean, if the Ravens all of a sudden started losing, you think they'd be selling out every week? Well, all, they're not all... selling out now. I mean, yeah. uh, like people yeah. don't I mean, look at the, the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the commander, excuse me. I mean, look at, look at, look at the Washington football club. I mean, there's a, a 90,000 seat stadium that you could shoot cannons through because of the ownership and because, because they weren't very good. Now under Rivera, they're clearly better. And, but any organization that wins when Dallas went one in 15 in Troy Aikman's first year, Nobody was there. Nobody was at Texas Stadium. So it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a paradox. The NFL is always going to have a very solid core of fans in any town that they have a team. But the rest of those seats have to be filled with people who want to be part of a happening where a team is a team is winning. It is amazing that, like, you you know, we are in these small backwater towns where everybody knows everybody, the media knows everybody, and the owner's calling you, telling you what you can and can't say on the air. Right, like, right, yeah. uh, you know, we're just in a – we're in a different – play, and they know better. They know they're never going to stop me from saying what I'm going to say. So right. the best thing they can do is just throw me out? I mean, I – the, I... the funny part, Esther, is that towns like Baltimore and, and Jacksonville, from, a, from an organizational standpoint – are so easy to own. All you got to be is a decent person. All you got to be is nice, you know, be part of the community. And we're going to root for it. Heck, I bought tickets for 10 years. You bought tickets for what, 27 years? I mean, you know, I mean, we're going to be fans and it's going to be, it's going to be our job to ask the difficult questions. And if you've got a coach who's worth his salt or a GM who's worth his salt, they know we're just doing our job. But they get sick of being attacked, and a real journalist asks real questions. They don't attack guys. They don't have an opinion in the question. They just ask the question. And as I said to Coughlin so many times during his tenure here, I'm your best friend in here. All I can do is ask a question and run your answer. Can't make up what you said. I can't falsify what you said. I, you know, Fans want to know, why did you cut these two guys when they're clearly – the best two players on your team. That's all. And you give me an answer. Tell me, don't come up and yell at me at practice. I mean, just tell me what the answer is. So I, I just think it's, it's a, it's a mentality that comes from the league where the NFL and you're not, we have two organizations in town like that. The PGA tour is very similar. You know, they just built this world global headquarters in Ponte Vedra and, um, you know, they act well, like they, I mean, the Saudi Ravens are throwing money at that. Yeah, maybe right. they threw money at the soccer match against Argentina. Anymore. But, uh, <laughs> but, but the, 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 the PGA being there as well. I mean, you've had a hell of a beat there for a period of time, right? Oh, I mean, those last 25 years, right? I mean, I've, I've covered 38 Super Bowls and 15 national football championships based on Georgia and Florida state and Florida and Miami and, and of course, the Players Championship is played here every year at the stadium course. Um, Augusta National gave me a big award this past year for covering 40 Masters, which was very unexpected and very much appreciated. Uh, it turned out to be a bigger deal than I thought. It was really nice of them. But uh, they let for, you play around? Oh, I've played there a half dozen times. But they, you know, they invited my whole family for the week and um, had beautiful. a banquet. It was, you know, it's a typical Augusta. Did it totally first class but um you know a town like jacksonville is so easy to get along in for any organization any sports organization if you just try to embrace what's going on here and the 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 nfl in the in the person of the jaguars 
just act like an alien spaceship oftentimes that they're downtown. And I tell them, you don't have enough people from Jacksonville working in your organization. Uh, you know? I'm about to write that column. I'm about Are to write you? that column here. And that's, they don't have and, any Baltimore well, people and they work and, for the Ravens. And that's an issue. That's really an issue because, and they go, well, and I don't know if you know the topography or the geography here in town, but they're like, well, you know, I've lived here seven years. I'm like, yeah, you live in plantation in Ponte Vedra beach. Not a third of your fans are south of J. Turner Butler and east of 95, which is a very affluent area. Nocatee, Ponte Vedra, South Side. I mean, the you mansion, know, mansion area. You gotcha. You know, so so you've got to have somebody who um has has a common touch in that organization. And they and and they don't have it. The PGA Tour doesn't have it, but then again, the PGA Tour is actually a national organization, but could also, and they do donate a lot of money here, but it takes more than that. It takes the common touch in a town like Baltimore and in a town like Jacksonville. Sam Kavara has been doing it a long, long time, voting on Hall of Famers and uh, doing television down in Jacksonville for four decades. Uh, I would say you're in semi-retirement, but Sam, sports lines out there, and what are you doing? And what are the Jaguars doing, and what are we going to find here other than a half-empty stadium and half-baked football and a kid who was pretty good at college a couple years ago? Well, you're very critical of uh, of a 3-7 and seven football team. How dare I? <laughs> They, they, they can't take my press pass. They already That's have. I've already canceled my That's trip. It. I canceled my room downtown. I, you know, all right. of that. So, yes. So it'll be interesting to see how many fans are there Sunday, uh, only because it is Thanksgiving Sunday and, and a lot of people are traveling that day, um, certainly to and from Jacksonville. But it's a. They got uh, better things to do than watch a three and seven football team. Right. And if the Jaguars were seven and three, it'd be very different. And you know what? Uh, save for the Kansas City game, the Jaguars have had the lead in every game in the fourth quarter that they've played this year. And so what's that tell you? That, well, they're the fourth youngest team in the league. That's one thing. The second thing is, is that they don't have a thumper on defense. You know, they're missing Lonnie Martz or Tom McManus or Paul Puzlesny. You know, somebody in the middle, when that hole opens, he just stands there and looks at you and goes, okay, it's me, it's you. One of us is going to leave the game here. But they don't have that. You know, they got a lot of fast, rangy guys, and they're playing decent. But when it comes, you know, push time, which is mid to late third quarter and into the fourth quarter, that other team takes over the line of scrimmage and just runs the ball and controls the clock. And that's where the Jaguars really have have needed help. And next year, they'll get some help with Calvin Ridley coming in. I mean, that's a very Jaguar move, isn't it? Make a move at the at the deadline for next year. You know, so Ridley comes in right now. They have wide receivers who run good routes. They don't have wide receivers who get open and there's a difference. And that's what they're, that's what they need. Trevor's a good player and he, uh, he's learning. You have to count this as his rookie year. The, um, as Shad Khan said to me last year with Urban Meyer was a quote, effing disaster what was that wait dude you've been watching this a long time yeah. listen i just did it a half an hour with dave high down in south florida about the the dolphins organization and they smell real good right now they are the seven yeah. they smell they, like they oh we got two on we got right. receivers and we're and i'm thinking you're eight months ago you were tom brady and bringing in sean payton so like i and he had right. jim harbaugh on the plane and he'd be the first guy trying to trade for lamar if lamar said he wanted to come home and like so i i I, I always think of this as week to week. And every time I get together with you and whether it was you or Dave Lamb down there or, 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 or Vito over 25 years, it always feels like the Jaguars are 12 months away from another coach, another leader, another quarterback, a one in 15, or we're going to start a wrestling federation and go do that. Right. They, they're better running wrestling than they are running the football team. Well, right? so far they are. That's a, that, they've been very successful with that AEW. That's for sure. And that's what happens when you get a TV contract when coming right out of the box. This organization has the right guy finally running it in Doug Peterson. He's the right guy at the right time with the right team. Now, this is his first year. And as I said, you have to count this as Trevor's rookie year and ATN's rookie year. They need, they need some veteran players. They don't, if you look around the teams, just look at Kansas City, for instance. I mean, they've got a blend of veteran and young guys that can can really play. And the Jaguars don't have that. As I mentioned, they're the fourth youngest team in the league. They're trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to win. At least Trevor Lawrence is willing to admit when he stinks. You know, unlike Zach Wilson, 
I don't know if Wilson's being treated unfairly up there because it's New York or what, but I mean, Trevor Lawrence has said after two different games, look guys, I just need to play better. And he's right. <laughs> you know, give him credit. He's right. He needs to play better. And in the last few weeks, he has played better, better reads, better throwaways, better, you know, live to the next play, better communications. And the one thing Trevor Lawrence has to be, if the Jaguars are going to get better over time, is more of an alpha on the field. You know, right now, nobody on his own team fears Trevor Lawrence. I got a lot of respect for him and his talent. Nobody's afraid of him. That needs to that needs to develop as the quarterback. He needs to become the sheriff out there. Sam Kavaris has been the sheriff down in Jacksonville for a long, long time. Uh, you can follow him out on Twitter. Um, give everybody your little uh, West Side story, as we would say here in Baltimore. Which part? <laughs> well, I mean, you're from here. I'm talking to a guy I'm from, from Jack. They born, don't know that you're from right. here. I need to born tell them raised, you're from here. Born and raised in Baltimore, which, by the way, um, Melissa Stark, she from Baltimore? Right. Melissa is from Baltimore. Yeah. Right? We got a lot and, of legends um, from Baltimore. Uh the guy who's the GM at the downtown um downtown Ruth's Chris here in Jacksonville. I'm talking to him the other night at a banquet. He went to Polly and then he went to Loyola. So Well, you know. some of you guys escaped for the palm trees and hitting the golf ball down there a number of years <laughs> ago. Right. You know, you got but, a ticket out of here. I had John Buren, they ticketed him in here, is what they that's did. Right. right. Yeah, they brought John in. In fact, I, a quick story about that. And John and I are pretty good friends. And when, when they got rid of me at this TV station here, he was the first guy I heard from and gave me some very sage advice. And I'll never forget how friendly that was for a fellow, for a colleague to, to offer that up. And I've offered that same advice to other guys as well. But um, the, the woman who was the news director at, the, at uh, WJZ there before they hired John and John was in San Francisco I always tease him. He was only he only worked at TV stations that had three letters because he worked at WSB in Atlanta. He worked at a three letter station in San Francisco and then he worked at WJC in Baltimore. But um, uh, this woman, Natalie Brown, was her name, the news director. And I was and it was down to me or John. And um, she called me up and she said, um, I'm, I'm got it down to you or John Buren. And I chuckled. And she said, what? I said, if it's between me and John, you got to hire John. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm nothing like John on the air. I said, we're good friends, but he's got a whole act, a whole shtick. You know, if that's what you're, if the, I'm nothing like that. Don't, don't, don't think that I'm going to come there and act like that. And sure enough, she hired John and, and, um, and you went to Florida, had a 40 year career. And, you got guitars yeah. behind you. You played I, the Masters. I, I Things worked here. out for you, dude. You know, absolutely. Now, I raised my, my wife and I decided this was a good place to raise our children because, as my parents have said many times, Jacksonville reminded them of Baltimore 50 years ago. You know, it was kind of a working class town with friendly people and, and, uh, trying to figure, trying to figure some things out in terms of, in terms of leadership. But I grew up in Woodlawn. Um, uh, went to Our Lady of Perpetual Help for a while. Um, went to Featherbed Elementary. Went to Woodlawn Junior High. Um, went to uh, Woodlawn Senior High for part of my sophomore year. And then my dad, who worked for IBM, moved to Washington. I transferred to um, Magruder High School in D.C. Ended up going to the university. I played football at Clemson my freshman year. Uh, transferred to uh, the, back to the University of Maryland. Graduated from there. Got my first job in Charleston, South Carolina, worked there three years, got my second job here. And I thought I'd work here three years and be in Tampa or Atlanta. But, you know, I stayed here for the main reason that guys stay anywhere. My wife liked it here. So <laughs> that's what we decided we were going to stay here. And the, the TV station at the time was owned by the Washington Post. And at the time, the Washington Post was a pretty well-respected news organization instead of a very... Um, political uh, operative as it is now and so it we we although we were in Jacksonville which at the time was the 48th largest market the other stations were in Detroit and Houston and Miami so we always had the best of everything and you know we we never were like operating like a 48th market TV station we operated like a top 10 station and our ratings reflected it for about 30 years and you know somebody had to oversee the dismantling of a uh, I guess a dynasty. And uh, the guy that got rid of me was the guy that did that. And then he, and then after he got rid of me, he went to Detroit of which his secretary called me and said, 
he went to Detroit. And I just said to her, I'll bet he thinks that's a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't been there in December is what I would say. Yeah. Right. He's from there. I was like, I bet he thinks that's a promotion. That's hilarious. But Sam Cavaris is here. He is in Jacksonville. Uh, he'll be watching all things Ravens and Jaguars. And a uh, most important thing here, a uh, pie, a uh, pecan, pumpkin, apple. What are you going with here, Sam, for the holiday? Um, I go with um, pumpkin and apple. We usually have two. And then my my kids, this is the year, luckily for me, uh, that my kids come here instead of going to their in-laws okay. with all my grandchildren. So everybody will be here. So uh, we were in Costco the other day, and we're also going to buy a pumpkin cheesecake. And then my wife will make a pumpkin pie and an apple pie. But pumpkin cheesecake was we we sampled that, you know, as you can as you can graze in Costco. That was pretty spectacular. All right, pumpkin cheesecake. I I have no argument with any. My whole thing is just a la mode. Those are the three most important words of the holiday. A la mode. You got to got to have ice cream on top yeah. of it, whatever you're doing. Get a little cinnamon from Wise or a little. Uh, my mm -hmm. favorite is vanilla bean because I'm you know I'm simple like that. Sam, I'm sorry I'm not coming down and uh, enjoying your fire pit down there on a beautiful 65 degree night. It's been cold as that hell here. Uh, thank God for Window Nation and. Um, Hopefully we'll get together again. I don't know. Maybe in another lifetime, we'll both be media members again after all these years. Yeah. You know, this this is an important game for the Jaguars. And I, I guess it's important for the Ravens because the Ravens should win it. I mean, the Jaguars are an underdog at home. I mean, the Ravens should win. Everybody agrees the Ravens are a better team. But uh, the Jaguars need to show out in this game and and be be a competitive franchise. And that's what everybody was looking for this year. If you remember last year, Jacksonville was – out of games at halftime. They were down 28 nothing at halftime, stuff like that. The fact that they've been had the lead in every game except one in the fourth quarter shows that they're competitive. They come out and they play better in the second half because they make a couple of adjustments. They've got some better players and they uh and th this team wants to play better. You've been around teams when you walk in the locker room, you can tell right away. You know, this team wants to win or it doesn't. It just is collected a paycheck. This is a team that wants to win. They, you know, they they like each other. They they like playing with 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 each other, and they think that they have something to build on here. And uh, with Trevor Lawrence and and ATN, with a couple of the guys that they that they've drafted, I mean, they should be better. They've had the number one pick two years in a row. You know, two years in a row. So you that's should... a lot of bad football. That's a lot of yeah. losing. Yeah, I mean that that should be the recipe for for winning. I was shocked when they. Picked Trayvon Walker, uh, not shocked, but disappointed because I thought he was more of a project. But I will say, uh, despite the rookie mistakes that he has made, he really has has shown out as a as a real player. I mean, this guy's going to only get better. He's a physical specimen too, and um, you know, defensively they need a thumper. They need a couple of uh, uh, cornerbacks that can really cover, and uh, who knows what can happen because I think offensively. When they get Ridley in here next year, they're going to be a much better football team. Because as you know, if you get a guy who can stretch the field or draws the safety's attention for, as well as the cornerback or a linebacker who leans that way, that makes everybody else better. You know, they're a half step more open. Trevor's getting better. I think I think the future's bright with Doug Peterson is the right guy at the right time in the right place. Just delete Ridley's gambling app off his phone. Let's start with that as we legalize mobile wagering beginning it's illegal today. illegal in Florida. It, can you believe that? We still can't do that in Florida. Well, we, we, we're we opening it this weekend here in Maryland. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. And John Martin from the Maryland Lottery and Gaming on last week telling us all about all the rules and the geofencing and all the things huh. that are going on and the licensees and all the control period and all that stuff. And last thing for you, come a long way from Urban Meyer. That's all I can say. I was a year Boy, That's. And, and I wrote a big article before they hired him, kind of an open letter to Shad that said, this is a bad mistake. And then I wrote an article December 11th of last year. And I said, hey, Shad, this guy's got to go. Um, was published in the Sunday paper. Little, to, little did I know that he fired him that night. So, <laughs> so this should make you the GM, Sam. 
that's uh, that's out of my purview. Um, <laughs> you got more Friday time is my on your birthday, and I'm going to call it my official retirement day too. So, all right, well, absolutely. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the turkey. Enjoy the football on Sunday, and uh, let's get together a little more often, man. We'll do it in London sometime. All right. You name it. Absolutely. That's Sam Cavaris of Woodlawn, always of Woodlawn, even though he's been down in Jacksonville for four plus decades at this point. Uh, you can find him at Sam Sports Line out on the internet. Obviously, find him out on social media as well. Uh, all Always great, great thoughts and insights on the game of golf, as well as uh, all things Jacksonville and Jacksonville sports. We're going to be doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back at Fadley's. We're going to be back at Costas uh, again a little later on in the month. I'm going to get dates and times together. Some of it has to do with some guests. There's a rumor that Gina Shock is coming back from the Go-Go's to Dundalk to uh, do a little holiday thing with us. Uh, vacation, all I ever wanted. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore positive.